Okay, Facebook Live. Welcome to... Can't turn your phone off. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Sorry, we just stopped because it said <laughs> turn our phone. I'm like, what? We can't turn the phone. Yeah, we'll yeah. Fit. Like, what? <laughs> anyway, what did you say? hopefully all this works. I hope so. I hope we're live. Yeah, we are live. That, okay. That worked, correct. Good. We just don't know if they're capturing us. They might just be capturing the mic and nothing else. There you go. And I really can't see you. Are you in there? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Okay. Yeah. You look like a, you're a little cloudy or in, in the cloudy? darker area. I'm not cloudy. Stick your head over here with me. I am. I'm just in this little shaded area. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is no big deal. Excellent. It's terrible when you see yourself. All right. Anyway, so we're going to have a show today about CBD topicals. I know it took us a little while to get into this. CBD topicals, huge popular item, super easy for people who just want to try CBD. Yeah. Uh, but they're also very effective at solving things. So uh, since it's so much popularity on the market today, we want to give you some, hey, uh, what do you need to look out for? Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. Our music has started, so we're going to get at it. Welcome to the CBD Ed Show. I'm your host, Ed Cheney, along here with beautiful Kimberly Rose. Hello, everyone. And we'd like to thank you for joining. I hope today's topic uh, suits you. Uh, it is going to be about CBD topicals. Yeah. We chose this topic today. A lot of people are choosing CBD topicals as a Christmas gift because it's a, a very easy product to give. You yeah. know, you're not ingesting CBD, thereby you're not being concerned about something so new and, and nobody really clearly has any uh, clinical studies to refer to. So a topical form of CBD uh, is just gaining lots of popularity for that reason. It's super easy to jump into the CBD world if you're just using a topical. Yeah, yeah, and I think a, a lot of my customers are leaning that way um, for, yeah, for definitely for a gift, just so yeah, that they don't have to worry about anything that they're right. giving to anyone. And, and we had a show on this last week. You don't even have to, like, really be prepared to answer a bunch of questions. No, you, you know, just I got, on. I got you some <laughs> CBD lotion. What for? Oh, pain or inflammation. Oh, Okay. Yeah. And you rub it in, and it's all self-explanatory. No, nothing. So that's probably why it's such yeah. an easy gift to give. This is why we're having this conversation about it today, is because it is growing. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's growing in its popularity. Right, and I think even stores that are carrying CBD products for the new first time. Yeah, they're cautious. They're a little cautious because yep. they're not really sure. Right. So again, that's the easiest, safest way to kind of get it introduced to their customers. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. So, uh, hey, but, you know, there's one thing, and this is our greatest service to our audience. It's still unregulated. Yeah. The CBD space is still unregulated. We are still waiting for FDA to work its way down to, through the supply chain, down to the retail. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, likely we'll see some stuff in 2021, uh, but we're still in self-regulation mode and thereby knowledge is super important if you are a consumer. Definitely. And here we go, we're gonna give you some knowledge on CBD topicals today. Now, we're talking that you know it's gaining all this traction because it's easy, but that's not the only reason. It is extremely effective at relieving joint muscle aches, inflammation, very effective at it, and very quick. Yes. Too. Uh, so, and we'll give you lots of knowledge so that you can easily make that decision on your own today. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, in our normal way, which is unbiased. Yeah, I think that's what we like to do is, you know, we're not just talking about the topical that we make. We're talking about all topicals. Top all, that's right. Topicals in general. All topicals. And <laughs> they come in a lot of different forms right now. They're popping up. They're just like... 
every other CBD product. Yeah. They're going in just about everything. And we can be helpful there too. I think one of the uh, one of the products that came out onto the market early in 2020 was a series of athletic wear that had CBD infused in it. Yeah, you told me about this. Yep. I, I had never heard of this. Yep. Now this is a this would be considered as a topical application. And I'm also suggesting that these are the things we might help you with today because I'm sorry, that doesn't work. Right? Yeah. If you understood science, if you understood, you know, bio, uh, any, listen, it's just, it did not work. <laughs> no. So. And wasn't there a CBD pillow out also? There was. We, there was. Some... Yeah, all came out at about the same time. Uh, but those have since left the market. Good. Uh, but anyway, so, I mean, we'll be able to touch on things like that as well. Now, let's start with, we talked about CBD topicals being popular because of the easy answer. But let's, let's go into their, their treatments, the conditions they're treating. Uh, pain, inflammation, and skin health are the three most popular. Yes. Now, pain. There are receptors in your skin. Cannabinoids that are from the hemp plant because they are in great abundance can trigger the neural transmission of pain signals and can either up or, or down regulate them and they normally down regulate them right. so it can manage pain for you so from the surface of your skin if you have pain in an area cannabinoids are effective in reducing the signaling of that pain yeah and that's I mean, we know that they work for me. I use them every day. Yeah. It, but I have a spot that I can reach, and it can get in there. So when we learn today, are we going to learn how deep yes. the CBD can reach? We do. Well, well, I think that's an extremely important topic yeah. when we talk about when we're discussing topicals. Okay. Because if it can't get to the, the CB spot. receptors, it's not going to work. Yeah. Uh, all right. The, uh, the next big thing it does is it uh, deregg uh, down regulates the production of cytokines, which cytokines create inflammation. Uh, naturally, it, it's, a, it's a design function uh, as a response to uh, damage, uh -huh. cell damage. So, but we don't want inflammation at an area of ache, you know, joint pains and stuff like that. We don't want that inflammation there. So cannabinoids, the CBD, is also good at downregulating the production of inflammation. Right. All right. Yes. And then last, skin health. You have CB receptors throughout your skin, and they trigger immune, immune response. They trigger inflammation. They trigger so many things that your ECS, your endocannabinoid system, is responsible for. And remember, your endocannabinoid system's ulterior motive is to keep your body in homeostasis. Right. Okay. Bam. And these receptors are in your skin in abundance. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, so that's kind of the conditions in which somebody using a CBD topical is going to use it for. Pain, inflammation are the two biggest ones. Skin health being, you know, following close behind. Yeah. Okay? All right. Hey, what kind of products have you seen on the market? that are considered topical and again it goes all the way to the clothing yeah okay. right yeah yeah i've seen well i mean there's just so many things there yeah. uh, your your most popular are going to be a pain salve okay right and then you're going to have lotions <sighs> those are more for skin what I would believe, be the biggest the difference health. what would be the biggest difference between a pain salve a cbd pain salve and a, P, and a cbd skin lotion well, I mean, obviously, consistency is there. One is more of a like a lotion, like you're, you're, nurturing, right? And okay. you're putting it all over your skin, okay. massaging it in to a degree that you're just trying to get your your skin to soak it in, okay. right? Okay. Where a pain salve, it's going to be um, it's going to be a thicker consistency. It's not a cream. It okay. comes in a jar, not a lotion like a is usual like a, a bottle of lotion okay. um and so it's going to be a little thicker um and you 
really are encouraged to massage that in. Really right. get it into a spot. You don't put it a pain salve all over your body. You would put it in a specific spot where you have that pain. And 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 re relating to that, I think potency of CBD is also the big indicator, or a big differenti differentiator between those two. Yes. And a, a single application of a pain salve could have 30 to 60 milligrams of CBD in it. A single application of a skin lotion will have more like 5 to 10 milligrams of CBD in it. Uh, yeah, they're you have, usually bigger bottles with right. lower milligrams. Yeah, right. you'll have a right. one ounce container of a pain salve that will have 500 milligrams of CBD in it as compared to a eight ounce bottle of lotion which will have 250 milligrams of CBD in it. And you can right. see if you did the math, You'll understand while I came up with those how I came up with those numbers. Yeah, the salve is definitely more what I would call medicinal. Medicinal, yeah. good call, good way to put that. What else have you seen? Uh, Roll-ons yep. seem to be making a big um, jump in the in the CBD world, and uh, those my the roll-ons that I have in the store, they're all uh, combined with like a menthol. Okay. So a salve, you're going to find a lot of essential oils and like a like a shea butter. Again, it's that thicker consistency. A roll-on is a liquid, mm -hmm. and um, if you like that feeling of an icy hot or that smell, that menthol feeling, um, then then that's that's the way you want to go. That's what, I mean. I've learned that menthol is a great ingredient, um, but it really, it, it really just distracts the brain from the pain. Yeah, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll actually have a we'll have a conversation today about menthol. Yeah, okay. But they are popular; they're out there. Um, a stick balm is also like a pain salve; it's just in a stick form. Um, patches, patches seem to be pretty popular. They're also usually menthol and that sort of situation. Uh, sports creams, bath bombs, there's just so many different ways. Bath bombs are wonderful. If you can get a good bath bomb that has all those wonderful ingredients, those essential oils and Epsom salt and all that stuff in there that really gives, the, uh, gives your skin a good soothing feeling and you're getting that CBD in there, okay. it's wonderful. All right. Yeah, and I've seen lots of popularity in bath bombs. Yeah. yeah especially during the holiday. Yeah. yeah. And I think that really the only difference most of my customers ask, what does it smell like? What's of the course. texture like? Right. Right. Yeah. And is it easy to use? Yeah. And what, obviously, will it work? Well, and understanding all these different delivery types of topicals probably will be much easier if we understood the skin a little bit. Yeah. So let's just have a conversation regarding skin so that we can tie these two together for you. Yes. And then you can really make informed decisions. So the skin, as I view it, in, in how the medical, uh, industry, the medical practice looks at it, it's one of the largest organs you have. Mm -hmm. This organ's on the outside of the body, so thereby it not only has to manage itself as an organ, but also has to protect itself from the outside environment, right? Cat scratches you, somebody bumps into you with something hot. Anyway, so there are the, the skin has some known layers, starting with the very surface called the epidermis, then there is the dermis, then there's a hypodermis, and then subcutaneous, t subcutaneous tissue, and then muscle. Yeah. All right, so those are the layers of the skin. Interestingly enough, when we talk about our endocannabinoid system, and it is made up of cannabinoids, which CBD is one of them, mm -hmm. as well as THC and CBG and CBN, but it also has endocannabinoids. These are the cannabinoids that your body makes, like anatomide and 2-AG. Interestingly enough, is these cannabinoids are designed to be like a key to the CB receptor. Right. which is what your endocannabinoid system is built in it from, is all these receptors, they're called CB1 receptors and CB2 receptors, that are throughout your entire body, and they're designed to be kind of like the, hmm, what's going on right now, and what do I need to fix it so I can keep us in, in homeostasis? Right, yeah. Basically, that's what it's made up of. And in your skin, are both CB1 and CB2 receptors throughout your entire skin. 
right. right? All over your body. Yeah. The interesting thing is these CB receptors are most commonly gathered in the dermis. Okay, layer so that's of the, skin. the second layer? That is the second layer. The epidermis is a very thin layer on the top of your skin that was designed to be a protective barrier between the organ, which is the dermis, uh -huh. and the outside environment with all the toxins and chemicals and things that could hurt your organ. So this very thin layer called the epidermis is what's in most of our concerns when we are producing a topical product right because it has to be able to break through that skin barrier if it does not which by the way the skin was designed to make that difficult it's trying to keep the outside from getting in right. and from what's on the inside from getting out yeah it doesn't want all its nutrients and its moisture leaving so that that uh, dermis uh, epidermis that dermal barrier is a big deal and if you have knowledge about it then when you go out and look for products including even just your normal moisturizing your skincare products that you're using at home if you understood that dermal barrier more you would probably do a better job at picking your your products right because you'd understand what carriers can pass through that barrier or what components or agents are capable of enhancing penetration through that barrier so forth and so on so let's keep talking uh, i don't want to get lost the CB receptors that are now clearly that I've defined are now in your dermis layer of the skin, so just below the epidermis, that barrier, gotcha. they're all there. They are designed to do a couple of very generic things. We won't get into deep, but generic things. So these CB receptors are designed to instigate cell proliferation. That's cell division, multiply. I need another one of these. Mm -hmm. They are designed for cell differentiation. This is cells changing how they are gonna to respond to something. Okay. So a cell can be just happy doing one thing, but if condition change, the cell has the ability to alter itself to be able to then deal with whatever's going on. Okay. Inflammation, the cell is capable of triggering cytokine production. And then finally, apoptosis. Cell apoptosis, that is, a, the cell already has the capability of a programmed death. Sounds bad, but that's what a cell needs to be able to do. And these CB receptors are capable of triggering act, any of these four activities. Wow. So, okay. So if you wanted a cell to die, it would kill it. No? If the cell was, <laughs> if, if, if apopt apoptosis was needed, the cell is capable of doing it. Okay. Uh, as an example, cancer mm -hmm. is the inability for apoptosis to take place. Oh, really? Right. This is okay. a mutated cell, no longer can die. It just keeps mutating and proliferating. Growing. Yes. Right, and multiplying, and then that's that, and then that leads to uh, that leads to uh, cancer moving to other parts of your body and so forth and so on. Okay. Metastasizing. Anyway, so. Listen to this. Here is what's super important. If you knew where these CB receptors were when you were buying your topical, you could be very, you could target this so much better. Oh. And I'm going to give you the two simplest tools. If you are just dealing with inflammation, those are CB1 and CB2 receptors and they're the ones that are very close to the surface so they're just below the barrier uh, the epidermis okay they're just below it so if you are just trying to manage inflammation you do not need to go that deep into the skin a roll-on for example right. would be an example of a great so if you have if, if you're a gym rat and you're just trying to manage inflammation post-workout kind of stuff, uh -huh. then a roll-on is terrific. Oh, okay, so it does work. Correct. And it does, I mean, so when you roll it on, because you're rolling it over the muscles and that whole area, 
Does is there a certain amount of time you should continue to roll on, or can you just no, roll, it on roll a on is, seconds? A roll on was just designed to be convenient. Okay. Right. So it has components inside of it, mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, menthol is one of them. Right. Menthol is a penetration agent. It's designed to enhance the penetration of whatever the carrier is that is bonded to that CBD molecule. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that's a lot, but yes. I'll keep going, and it'll hopefully it'll make more sense. So if you're just dealing with inflammation, most topical products will work really well. Right. If you're dealing with pain, you're trying to manage pain, that could be joint pain, but it also could be what we're dealing with a lot here lately, shingles, neuropathy. Mm -hmm. These are all things that are really surfacing lately. Are they, are they more of a, that's more of a nerve that pain, That is right? correct, that okay. is correct. So, by the way, those receptors are much deeper in the, uh, the um, dermis. dermis. The dermis. They're <laughs> much deeper in the dermis. So not only do you have to cross that dermal layer, but you also need small molecule size so that it will penetrate deeper into the skin. Okay. Okay, to get to those CB receptors that are influencing pain signaling, you got to get your product deeper into the dermis. And okay, so now, and how do you do that? Right, there's a couple of different ways. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cover three of them. Uh, so first and foremost is the carrier agent itself. Must have a small molecule capable of penetrating the dermal barrier. So small molecules, you know, they're um, um, shea butters and cocoa, but only fraction cocoa oil. Um, rose hip oil, avocado oil, these are all oils with a very small molecular structure and they'll get deep into the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, second thing is heat has an impact here, heat. And so when we use a topical salve and on those instructions you see rub for 60 seconds, the reality is, is we're generating heat. Yeah. All right, so don't miss that part because that was very important. The massaging okay. it in is, I have found, the key. Oh, it's, it's totally the key. The key for my, yeah. you can't oh, just my put goodness. it on and not well, get it in there. Right, yeah. so we both have experience here. Right. Right, I, I've put tossed it on my lower back and walked away and went, I guess that's okay. Until I understood this, and then I rubbed it in for 60 seconds. Yeah. And three times more, four times more. I don't know. I, I just will never not. I will never not rub it in again. How's that? And is that because you got to get past all those <coughs> layers to the muscle area? The, or? the friction, the heat, mm -hmm. loosening up the bonds of all those atoms and and nuclei, all those bonds are being loosened. Okay. Thereby, penetration uh, is much easier. Okay. okay. Uh, and then the last one is, uh, let's see here, things that could enhance penetration. Uh, again, uh, menthol was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so anytime you have a product with menthol in it, it can speed that up. You just have to be okay if you're, uh, you can tolerate the smell. It's, yeah, it's okay. just the smell. All right. right? But it's not, it's, not a, it's not a gimmick. It really is a real thing. Is yeah, what I want to I, share. It, it seems to be coming out again, and uh, mainly just in in roll-ons. But um, it could be in the some of my pain salves a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Now keep in mind that there are other things to consider too. Um, as you age, penetration is a little a little more of a challenge. Really? Yes, it is. Well, doesn't our skin get thinner as we age? And more dense. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. just not as effective. So then, can I ask you how a bath bomb then, if you're not, if you're just soaking? Are uh, you soaking in cold water? No, hot, yeah, hot water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Duh. Right? <laughs> I'm sure there's people out there that would try, I, but I don't know if the bath bomb would melt in cold water. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, probably but not. Throw some in the pool. <laughs> so, and then, so maybe your carrier is, or is just the heat and the Epsom salt and the... Correct, but remember, the molecule oil? still had to be bonded to to an oil-based product. So inside of that bath bomb, there is Essential still oils. some type of oil in there, mm -hmm. or they encapsulated the, mo the molecule into something that 
uh, once it drops into your skin could be released. Okay. Okay, so encapsulation is still kind of a thing, but mm -hmm. uh, not as common as it just bonding to an oil. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. So age, also location. Certain locations of your skin have less resistance to penetration than others. Yeah, because this I'm not going to let it, you know, the top, bottom of my hand, very calloused, obviously, right? Wow. So that's probably something that describes this the most easiest. The more weathered, the more exposed, the more, probably the least amount of penetration. Yeah. Okay, okay so how about, I'm not sure how I say this. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about if you're a bigger person and you have, let's say you have hip pain. Okay. I, I'm pretty confident when I tell my customers that if they have like knee pain or lower back pain, those areas that don't have oh, a lot of tissue mm -hmm. between the skin and the pain location. You're, you are going in the right direction. The deeper the, it, the, deeper the issue is, uh -huh. the, the less topical can get to it, but topical still has an impact there. Uh, because you want inflammation to be managed all the way up to the surface of the skin. Okay. But when there is something like a hip pain, like a hip pain. that is kind of deep, you will need to hit it both in both directions, both topically Good. and internally. And what we mean by internally is something that's ingested. So that, okay, that's what I usually say when you, when you have yeah. pain that deep, yeah. that you would, I would recommend a tincture and a topical. The and topicals. You use them together, yeah. not one at a time separately, use them together. Yeah, the topical is just not going to get that deep. It's impossible, it's not capable. It's right. not capable of getting even past the dermis. I don't know of any topicals, uh, and I'm, I'm fairly educated in this area, and I, can, I, I couldn't tell you one that could get that, that, that deep. deep. Okay. Um, uh, so you have to get them from both directions, uh, but there's CB receptors everywhere, so it definitely is worth not being in pain, worth giving this a try. It's not super expensive, it really isn't, and it's certainly there's no pharmaceutical out that I know of that doesn't have serious, serious side effects. Right. Muscle yeah. relaxers, all those things, serious side effects, where CBD to date still has no known side effects. Right. World Health Organization made that claim and they, I, I'm confident they are not making that claim without it, their due diligence. Yeah, okay, so another question, quick one. I have a customer who says, well, I just like to take my CBD sometimes just topically. I don't, I don't wanna do a tincture this time around. I'm just gonna use it topically. Does the CBD get in and can it help if you're using a topical for things like anxiety? No. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I was like, hmm, All uh, right. that's interesting. So here, here, here's, <laughs> you know I was being funny. Right. So, but the answer still is no. The CB1 receptors that are commonly in the brain need to get access to those cannabinoids. Okay. All right, now it has access to two different types of cannabinoids, phytocannabinoids and endocannabinoids. The phytocannabinoids, or from the hemp plant, must be delivered in such a way that it can get to the brain. That means it needs to get into your blood. So it can go there two ways, through your glands, like under your tongue, or through your digestive system, or through your respiratory system. Those are the ways it's going to get into your bloodstream so that it can get into the brain where those types of receptors are located. Because those receptors want to create their own endocannabinoids called anatomide. Okay, okay. So, so it does not go, it won't travel through, it won't go through the it's skin not, and travel all around and do its thing. It's not going, I'm not going to say it's not going to, but it's not going to be very efficient at it. Gotcha. Okay? okay. Nor will it be efficient at sleep or any of those things, other than relaxing your muscles because so you they're causing sleep. you a problem. Correct. Right. All okay. right? Okay. So keep, that's a great question. Keep that in mind that uh, dermally applying uh, or topically applying CBD will not solve those issues. Okay. Uh, which you just think the ones that are probably brain related, which your sleep cadence is, your anxiety, uh, those are those are 
CB1 type receptor issues. Okay. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right, let's do this. We're going to take a quick little break so that we can organize our thoughts into stage two of this topic. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll be right back. Okay, well, we're not leaving you guys. Hi! <laughs> we're still here, and I, I have to confess, I, I sell a lot of topicals at the store, but there's so many times somebody asks me that question or makes that statement, like, um, I'm just going to take my CBD topically this month. And I thought, I, I mean, I'm not going to tell you no, but I just don't know if it's going to give you the benefits um, with your anxiety that you're right. also feeling. But, I mean, if he thought it did, then... It's a placebo. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, so I guess... It's still no side effects. Yeah. If it works and there's no side effects, that's really, I think, the goal of this market. Right. CBD. Let's get let's get rid of the side effects. Yeah, and then I also had, and I'll bring this up probably again in the show, so I apologize now, but um, I still have people that go, oh, this isn't going to really work. No. This isn't really going to take away my pain, and I try and enforce them. I try and say, I, I promise you that if you use it the way um, it's intended and the way that I, I specifically tell you to use it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it will work. Yeah, let's say that <laughs> the way it really is. Because <laughs> I always try and say, you're trying, your inflammation is very large right now. Think of it as like just, wow. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. And you're trying to get that inflammation under control. Kind of like when you have surgery and the doctor says, don't wait for pain. Take it like I tell you every four hours, this pain pill for the next week. Yep. Yeah. You are tuned into Welcome back, listeners to CBD Ed Show. We're happy to share information to you with you today on CBD topicals. Yes. They're super popular and they really are effective. But buyer beware. Good knowledge here goes a long way in picking a great product. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's, you know, I think that not that we're bad consumers. But I think we just go by like reviews or top yeah. 10 lists or we don't really actually look at the ingredients um, on the label. Well, it's hard. You look at some of these ingredients and sometimes you just, I, I'm lost. Well, I don't understand why a lot of people put on their ingredients list, um, I guess the fancy word for like an essential oil. And they put this long word that nobody really understands and it ends up being like, you know, mint or, or <laughs> right. Right, and you're just like, why wouldn't you just say essent mint essential uh, oil? Or yeah. I don't know, I don't know. But I always, I've learned, I haven't always, because I've been one of those consumers that didn't really look at the right. at the ingredients. Let's let's talk about the way the world is right now. Yeah. Listen, the the commerce has taken us over. Yeah. We really have. And the less informed you are, the more willing you are to just take the lead or take that, just follow the leader. Right. And this has been replayed over and over and over again. You know, to put mint on there means somebody will question it. To put the long 32 letter yeah. uh, scientific word for it on there, it means that nobody's going to question you at all. Yeah. You that's, know? that's. Getting FD, right. Just, just it's it's a terrible thing, but it is the world we're living in. Right. Uh, much like uh, you know, I suggested while we're on the break, uh, today's medicinal solutions for the things that ail that that you know cause us problems are almost a hundred percent littered with side effects, and we have become immune to that. Our, our, we have become callous to, or we, we just, we hear, this could cause death, and we're like, okay. Right, yeah. Right, so we've just become that uh, society, and I think that's one of the great things uh, that we are bringing to light is 
medicinal solutions do not have to have side effects. No, and they and they need then and the more natural the better for us as humans. That's how I, I, we were built. Right. This way. Yeah. We weren't built for synthetic solutions, single molecule. Oh, no. Anyway, anyway, don't Obviously, get me off that. one of the biggest <laughs> warnings should be the commercial that talks so wonderfully about a product and then on hyperspeed are all the side effects. <laughs> the 20, the, the, the 22 side effects to look out for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which we all just tend to tune out now. Right. Anyway, so, well, let's stay on topical. Topical is a great solution for inflammation, joint pain, skin health. Uh, keep in mind, topical means that it's, it's, it, it's gonna deal with those issues at a topical place. Right. So it's not gonna go deep in and take care of hip joints, and so it, it's topical, keep right. that in mind. Uh, so one of the conversations we had before the break was how to get that CBD past the dermal barrier because we now know the CBD, the CB receptors are in the dermis. So that means the product has to be able to get down to it. So we talked about a few things and now I thought we'd just dig a little, a little bit further about those correct carriers. Mm -hmm. Those correct carriers need to have a smaller molecule so that it can get down, they need to be able to penetrate the dermal barrier. So I have a list of things and it's interesting, some of the items that are on this list. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, by the way, they've all been ranked by their penetration, their ability to penetrate into the skin. Oh. So the lower the number, the better. Oh, the lower the better. Yes, the lower okay. the number, the better, the more, more capable it is of penetrating. Grape seed oil, hemp seed oil, fraction coconut oil. That's what we use. Uh, shea butter, that's what we use. Mm -hmm. um, apricot kernel, uh, let's see here, let's see uh, if there's other cool things on here. They're suggesting that general cocoa oil and general coconut oil are both high in numbers, being wow. not very effective. Palm kernel is also high in number, and linseed flax is high in number. So if you're seeing things like that in your product, you've thought that they might not penetrate very deeply. If you're using it for inflammation, you're fine, but if you're using it for pain, it may not go deep enough to get to your pain. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let me see if there's another couple of good ones. Uh, I got grapeseed, castor oil. Uh, castor oil being extracted from the castor bean, so that might be important. Uh, again, when I talked about coconut oil, uh, being good, it has to be fractioned coconut oil, okay, which is, MCT. Up, you know, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, you usually get it virgin and, and organic because it's it's refined that way. Uh, let's see, I've also, uh, I've heard uh, avocado, uh -huh. uh, I've heard, okay, I can't remember all of them, anyway, <laughs> uh, but it's really easy to go on Google and find this list. Yeah. It truly is. Uh, I looked for a list, it was called Carrier Oil Quick Reference Guide. So if you type that into Google, you'll be looking at the exact same list I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. So again, Carrier Oil Quick Reference Guide. If you are, if you have a, a skin hydration problem, mm -hmm. in other words, you need more moisturizing than most, you'll want to pull up a list like this. Yeah. Because you'll want to get a carrier that can take all those supplements that are in that moisturizing lotion and get it into your skin. So the carrier, and usually the carrier is always the number one or number two item in the ingredients list. Right. We, yeah, definitely. Because it's, want it's those. the largest component in a moisturizer or a salve or a topical. Uh, it usually is the largest quantity of stuff. It's called the carrier. Right, and yeah. That's what I, everything bonds to. I didn't even know that there was a chronological order that things should go in oh. before <laughs> right. I started working <laughs> right. at the store. Yeah. I just looked at the ingredients and went, oh, okay, right. and yeah. Now, uh, let's go in another direction. We've had plenty of conversations around this. There are versions of CBD in the marketplace. Yes. And I'm going to tell you, I don't. I'm not the one that says that these versions were created because of the potential benefits of the product. 
they were created because of the fears that exist in the buying population. Oh, are you talking about an isolate? A isolate, isolate, broad spectrum, full spectrum. They were all created to deal with the concerns of cannabis. Yes. And those concerns are, and they're valid, THC. Spooks a lot of people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Except those people who understand that the hemp plant does not produce enough THC to ever get you high. If you knew that, you would not fall into this group right. of people who are like, oh, can you just take all the molecules out for the, except for the CBD? All right, well, let me tell you uh, something about topicals as it relates to which of these versions are going to work for you. Isolate, broad spectrum, or full spectrum. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you are just dealing with inflammation, you can get that accomplished with just an isolate, just with the CBD molecule itself. CBD molecule itself will definitely deal with inflammation uh, and you won't need anything else. Now, let me ask you this. In a topical, like a tincture, will you have to increase your dose with an, a, an isolate topical like you do with the tincture? You can't, you, won't? You, you can't remember. So if you are taking an isolate and it doesn't solve the problem, it's never going to solve the problem. Because remember, an isolate, if you read the study on entourage effect, the bell curve, the bell curve results of an isolate, a CBD molecule by itself, is the more you take, the less it works. Right. Okay, so that study is already out there. Again, you can review that study. It's called the Bell Curve Study. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you, you don't even have to put cannabinoid behind it. You just do that one and it'll pull up that study. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So if an isolate is not working, you can continue to put on more and it's not really going to change anything. Okay. okay. Now, what if it works for a little while and now it's not working and you... Then it, you're, you've, you've increased your need, so your inflammation has gotten bigger. Okay. And you may not be able to solve it with an isolate. You may need to move up to the whole plant. Right. Now, as, I, as a reminder, the whole plant has all of the cannabinoids, all of the phyto products that are in that plant, and they all work synergistically. Again, another study called the entourage effect. Entourage meaning that all components working together. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, so if we think about pain, which is a really important solution for a lot of people, pain management. I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to freak you guys out here, but CBD, CBG, THC, Delta-8, THC, Delta-9, THC, these are all of those cannabinoids affect pain. Mm -hmm. Yes. CBD is not the grand one. It really isn't. It just has the most, but it's not the grand one. So if you're dealing with pain, you're not going to solve it with an isolate. That I'm sure of. Yeah. Yeah, well... If you don't, and if you have, if you have any lack of confidence in my knowledge, simply go to a cannabinoid chart on the internet. Yes. Just, just type in cannabinoid chart uh, and it will list all the cannabinoids that are currently in the hemp plant and it will tell you what they are capable of relieving. Now, did you do any research? Which, by the way, is just meaning that they are attracted to one CB receptor or another. Yeah. And it's the CB2 receptor, or a CB1 receptor that is, they, they actually will both, but the CB1 receptor is more prone to deal with pain signaling. Ah, okay. Okay, okay. so then did you do any research on like, um, say you're at a dispensary and they've got like a, what, one-to-one or 50-50 or whatever you call it, um, pain salve. Is what, do you feel like that would be uh, more beneficial? Because I've heard that the THC molecule, molecule is bigger and can't be, can't go in deep. So there are two things about the THC molecule, and I think that one is very relevant. Uh-huh. Can really very, very much so. But the other, the other one is, is remember, ab- an abundance of THC, your CB receptors can become resistant to THC. Okay. It does not apply to the other cannabinoids, only to the THC cannabinoid. Okay. It can become resistant to it. So you've been using it for pain management, and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Mm. 
And we've talked about this before. We have to take a break for two or three weeks. And then, but who wants to do this in pain management? So yeah. be careful with the high amounts of THC, I guess, is, is what my knowledge currently tells me. Be careful with the high amounts of THC. Okay. 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 Now, smaller amounts topically are going to solve the problem. Okay. It, it's my, uh, my, not only my current understanding, but my also my current experience, and so is yours. Yeah. So our topicals that we currently see that are outside of the dispensaries are in that area of 20, 23 CBD molecules to one THC molecule. Right. So that's that, that, that range, and it's extremely effective. Yeah. So going to a one-to-one, -one, uh, I've not seen, I've not even seen a product out there, to be honest, so. Yeah, I just didn't uh, know question, if they were at dispensaries because uh, I had a customer ask me, so should you yeah, think I should question. get yeah, something yep. higher? So that's my conversation about uh, isolates or full full spectrum, uh, the whole plan. you got to do the whole plan or you won't solve everything. If you were just going after inflammation, though, you're fine. Yeah. I know there's still a lot of people out there that are concerned about THC. I do expect that that is going to go away soon. Yeah. Because the public is becoming more and more aware that those are two very different plants. Hemp plant, marijuana plant. Hemp plant does not have enough THC in it. THC is not the problem. Abundance of THC is the problem. Right. Okay? Alcohol. We cook with alcohol. Yeah. But if you drink an entire bottle of wine, you can't drive anymore. Right. But if I put alcohol in my flambouille or whatever that's called, <laughs> I, nobody's going to be going, oh, my God, I can't drive now. It's, okay? It's tiramisu. <laughs> So Many wait, desserts, actually. Wait a minute. Isn't there some bananas? Too. All right, yes, anyway. Yes. <laughs> uh, but it, that's my point. Um, all right. So what's on the market? Are there any legal issues or any health issues? So let's go with first legal. No. No more legal issues. Cannabis is now hemp-derived CBD. hemp-derived CBD products which include THC, is now 100% legal federally. Yes. Done. Yeah. Okay. Full spectrum, broad spectrum, isolate, it's all okay. It's all okay. You can. So that means possession and all that. Now, right. your state, and again, we just had an election, so a lot of things have changed in favor of the products. Yeah. But just check in with your state. Your state might have some issue with uh, cannabis products and but again I think that's down to just one or two states yeah now I think um, I would like to just bring up the fact that if you have a, a lotion or a pain salve or something like that um, especially a pain salve I have customers ask me well can I use this for something else mm -hmm. yeah like if you get uh, if you get psoriasis or you get an eczema or you get some kind of a skin condition Yes, use that on that also because it can help relieve that um, the itching and the inflammation at the skin level, right? That's I mean, so it's true. Really, That's even so, acne, all and, those things. Inflammation causes so many problems. Yeah, and it's it's a response thing, so it's it's naturally designed to respond this way. But our bodies always had lots of cannabinoids in it. It just in today's society doesn't have as much so right. inflammation was always well managed but not so much in today's society mm -hmm. uh, so a plant like this to come along and help us to get regain that balance is, is important so uh, so yes you would be correct inflammation is a big problem any most things our skins are dealing with have a component of inflammation related to it yeah which can remedy a lot of things right I, th I think the only time I say not to put it on is if you have an injury and let's talk about that an open wound or something like that right yeah listen be cautious when you go into an open wound you can stop other you can stop the healing process yeah. if you put external stuff in there right all right and you normally wouldn't anyway so don't think CBD is out a topical CBD is outside of this uh -huh. so if you're not gonna put lotion inside of that cut don't put CBD inside of that cut because they both have the same carrier right all right yeah they and don't that, need to go anywhere near I mean open as soon wound. as your wound is healed yeah then of course start putting it on I 
I don't have any knowledge if it helps in scarring or anything like that, but if nothing else, it's going to reduce that inflammation and that irritation in that area and give you some relief yep. um, against psoriasis. I, I did have one, um, one customer that came in and asked me about a CBD deodorant. <laughs> and I, I didn't, um, I don't think it will help as far as the deodorant so much as, you know, that part. Because it was an all natural deodorant, which is great. It didn't have all of that stuff that we're, we're, not, oh. we're not supposed to use. Um, but I did think, I thought, after she left, I thought, well, could CBD get in there and help with, you know how, especially with women who have breast cancer, they're always taking those nodules out of the armpits mm -hmm. on that side that is affected, or both sides, or however. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything that might be able to? It could be, but it wouldn't be the CBD because CBD is not anti -tum anti-tumoral. Uh, CBG, uh, uh, delta eight; those are all things. THC is even anti-tumoral. So it would have to be something more than spectrum. correct than just uh, an isolate. isolate. Okay. So if it just said isolate only, then I, I don't know if that uh, would be effective for that reason. But I like your thinking. You're thinking outside of the box. Yeah, I'm just thinking, you know, because the for whatever yeah. reason in the yeah. armpit, there seems to be something there that, they, glands, that yeah. they always want to remove those glands. Yeah, so I mean, so there could be products out there. I can't speak to the odor part of it, uh, but there yeah. could be a gland problem. Yeah. Um, that it might be addressing, but that's not a common thing. So uh, that should be more a conditional product as opposed to oh, look at the new uh, the new um, antiperspirant on the market. Yeah. Uh, another thing we've seen on the market is sun tanning lotion. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. SPF lotion with CBD in it. Yeah. And I want to caution everybody. Um, what's what's the purpose? What is the purpose of of a, a CBD added to a SPF product. When I think about it, CBD is capable of managing inflammation, capable of managing uh, pain, but not capable of stopping a sunburn in any fashion. No. It has nothing to do with your body's production of melanin, uh, which is your, body, your skin's natural protection for uh, sun exposure. Uh, it has no 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 interaction with that at all, so I, I'm not really sure if there's any value uh, with a CBD added to an SPF top, topical. Yeah. My current knowledge. So, do you would you say that's a, like a gimmick, or would you? Uh, say no, that's... I'm not going to suggest. Uh, I don't. I don't want to uh, make that kind of a judgment call. I just don't see any knowledge that supports it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I try to immerse myself into this knowledge. Often doesn't look like it, but I do my best. Yeah, I try and get my knowledge from uh, from the CBD Ed show, just like you guys, every <laughs> once in a while, because I do. Wow, I that makes me feel so good. So many people that say, "Oh my God, we've got this great product for you to sell in your store," and yeah. it's CBD deodorant or CBD sunscreen, or yeah. um, I just heard, and nobody was trying to give send this to me, but. I have a friend who does spray tans, and that's going to be another thing that she's going to introduce to her customers mm -hmm. is uh, some CBD in the spray tan. Yeah. Now, CBD and spray tan is going to be fine because uh, a spray tan solution, by its nature, has to be in a small molecule carrier. Mm -hmm. Because a spray tan, it's it's by design needs to get really deep into the skin, you know, so that when you get this coloration, uh, it will stay with you for a while, you know, like yeah. nine to eleven days. Right. Uh, it's because your epidermis, that top layer of your skin, is constantly regenerating itself, constantly, you know, shedding off old and building new. And so, you know, much like if you put a little sharpie mark on your skin, two or three days later, it just naturally goes away. Right. Well, if that sharper ink had even smaller molecules and got a little deeper, it would stay, it would stay on there longer, like a henna tattoo. Anyway, so the carrier being a spray solution, if you put CBD in it, it does get in quite deep, and it's, it's not a bad thing. Okay. Uh, one more. A CBD topical for tattoos. 
is that beneficial? Um, I certainly can see. Let's let's go to that whole range of product. Uh, let's talk. So that sounds like skin health. Yeah. So on the immediate after a tattoo, that's what all they're all fighting is that inflammation. inflammation. Yeah, you're pretty right. red. They want that to go away as quickly as possible. So absolutely great topical application is for uh, immediately after a tattoo is put on. Uh, and then generally just skin health. Yeah. Uh, CBD uh, does enforce a, a, and boost the immune response in the skin. Okay. So getting a tattoo, you know, you're inviting a lot of outside material into your skin, right. and a CBD product uh, applied to your skin would enhance the immune response. Would calm it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Through right. through that through through the, the immune response, and most of your skin health. And when you have a product, you know, lotions or cosmetics that have CBD in it, mostly looking for that particular skin health thing. Okay. Okay. Immune response and management of uh, of uh, inflammation, so forth and so on. Yeah, but you want to wash your ingredients again, right? You want, yes. to, you want to make sure nothing in there is an irritant to a, any skin condition. Right. A little, home, little homework will go a long ways in this area. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. I think we might have come to a point where we have to close on this topic. Okay. This is a good topic. Yeah. Lots of good questions. Lots of good answers. Keep in mind, vet who you're buying this, this CBD topic from. Mm -hmm. If you go to a place and you check that their label, if it doesn't say that third party tested, then you really don't know how much CBD is really in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it, it just, I'm sorry, just can't. Nowadays, you got to. Once FDA comes in and says, you must have the exact amount that's on the label, must be in that product, or we're booting you out of the industry. But right now, no. It's like, okay, yeah. Yeah, right. We, we have 2 million milligrams of CBD in our product. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and people are buying it, just FYI. Right. I saw, I saw it on Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Are you kidding me? Right. Anyway, so be cautious about um, the vendor you're buying it from. We're still self-regulating. And then, uh, hey, feel free to give us a shout. Anytime you have questions about any products that are on the market, we're happy to help you with it. Mm -hmm. Info at Canafil.com is a good way to reach out to us. Right. All right, Kimberly, uh, we're going to have to close. I want to thank all our listeners for allowing us to provide you this service. Uh, thank you for your wonderful questions and your information that you brought to us. And thank you, Tammy, back at the office for the help. Yes. I really want to say we appreciate doing this for everybody. And, uh, hey, that's a wrap for now. So this is Ed Cheney and Kimberly Rose, your hemp authorities, wishing you a can day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. You do the same. Thanks. All right. Um, so... Yeah, so you know, now you're not going to see us for a while. I said that I said that last time, uh, but I missed that. Today was the actual live show. Uh, but now our next two shows are not going to be live, so you won't see us until the first week of January. Uh, everybody stay safe. Uh, feel free to reach out to us You know, on the show. You can respond if you had any questions about anything that was on today's show. You can just respond to this uh, Facebook Live thing. That's fine, too. Yeah. Uh, everybody keep safe with, uh, you know, the COVID on the rise and traveling and all that. Happy holidays. Um, Happy New Year. We'll see you back here. I think our next show is the 8th or 9th of yeah. December that we'll be live. Yep. Yeah. So it's something like that. Okay. And uh, by the way, if you do know of people who have uh, COVID, um, send them lots of positive thoughts. Yeah. That stuff works. It really does. So, and I think the more people that send out that energy the bigger it becomes we have definitely learned that a positive attitude and a good yeah. vibe is always always important yeah. especially right now yep yep i totally agree okay everybody have a great couple of weeks enjoy your holidays Bye. we'll talk to you again soon bye